One of the most celebrated athletes in American history and a Big Ten icon is no longer with us. Dick Buckus, famous football player who started at the University of Illinois and then in the NFL with the Chicago Bears, died on Thursday. He passed away peacefully in his sleep overnight. A man synonymous with toughness leaves a legacy that will not soon be forgotten. Dick Buckus for many decades has been in the discussion of greatest football players in American history and for good reason. We are here to remember and honor him in a special edition of The Big Show. I'm Mike Hall. The list of accomplishments in the life of Dick Buckus is long and staggering. From a high school standout on the gridiron to becoming a unanimous All-American linebacker at Illinois to Hall of Fame NFL star with the Chicago Bears. And he went on to long-lasting success after his football days thanks to broadcasting, acting, TV commercials, and much more. Though the first time he truly started turning heads on a large scale was when he started off in Champaign-Urbana as a member of the Illinois football team. Buckus started out at Illinois in 1962 playing both linebacker and center. In 1963, he was not just an All-American, but a unanimous one. He won the Chicago Tribune Silver Football for the most valuable player in the Big Ten and wound up sixth in the Heisman, again, as a defensive player. Then the next year, he was again unanimous All-American and this time was third in Heisman voting. He was a college football Hall of Fame inductee in 1983. His jersey's been retired all over the place in college and in pros. He was named to the NFL's top 75, top 100 teams of all time. His statue unveiled outside Illinois' Football Performance Center in 2019. And, of course, the nation's top linebacker wins the Buckkiss Award every single year. A fellow fighting Illini, Howard Griffith, joins me here to talk about the life of Dick Buckkiss. Howard, you played there. Mm -hmm. You know what it's like. You saw his number. You've seen the pictures back when you were playing and in your time since then. What does Dick Buckus mean to Illini football? Ooh, it's, it's really everything when you start to think about modern day football players, right? Because that's who they know. You know, you talk about the Wheaton Iceman, right? And as great as he was, but people really identify with who Dick Buckus was as a player. Then, as you talked about, Mike, in his commercials and his sitcoms, different things like that, he is everything that, that Illinois football is really trying to be and wants to be with just the last name of Buckus. Right. It's amazing. You look at his pro career. He only had two winning seasons and never made the playoffs, and mm -hmm. yet he's still regarded as one of the greatest to ever play. What does that say about his skills? Well, I think it's not only his skills, but when you start thinking about his size, it's 6'3", 245 pounds. He played middle linebacker. He played center, too. He did it all, right? So you think about the linemen at that, at that, during that era, they weren't all that big and physical, but he was. And not only you talk about a guy that can play center and play the linebacker position, middle linebacker, he was fierce and nobody could really block him. So he ran through people. That's why when you look at his statue and you see him leaping out, it, that's what he was doing. He was always on the attack. So He's uh, one of the phenomenal players that have ever played, not just at the University of Illinois, but you're talking about college, you're talking about professional athletes. Everyone knows the name Buckus. And one of the most fearful presences in the, <laughs> on the football field of all time, no matter the era as well. A huge impact on this Illinois program. The team sent out its condolence and thoughts to the Buckus family after the passing of the all-time great orange and blue player. Well, let's bring in Josh Whitman now, the athletic director at the University of Illinois. Uh, Josh, thank you for joining us. You know, you've been at this job for a long time, and with it come various different situations. I assume one of them is you get to meet and spend time with legendary people at the university like Dick Buckus. How well did you get to know him over the last handful of years? I was really fortunate, Mike. I got to know Dick very well. Spent a lot of time with him over the, our years together. I had a chance to share some really unique experiences with him. I got to tell him that he was going to be the inaugural member of our Athletics Hall of Fame. I got to tell him that we were going to build a statue in his honor. I got to be with him backstage before we went out to introduce and dedicate the statue, uh, along with several other opportunities out in California and 
and certainly here in Champaign, up in Chicago, he became a good friend and uh, it was a big blow to me and, and to everybody in the orange and blue today. Try to put into words for me what Dick Buckus has meant and what he still means to the University of Illinois. He was the greatest living Illini. There's really no other way to describe him. He is an iconic figure, somebody who has found a way to transcend the game of football. He truly is the identity of what it means to be an Illini. He was tough, he was fierce, he was loyal. Uh, he had this incredible heart, this gentleness to him away from the field. He was an, an unbelievable teammate. He was a winner. He was everything that, that we talk about, not only in the Illinois football program, but in all of, all of Illinois athletics and ultimately the entire University of Illinois. Josh, is, isn't it wild? We're talking six decades since he last played for Illinois, and yet he's a name and a figure that incoming freshmen already know who he is. There are only a few people like that in the history of sports, and, and you just need one name. You just say Buckus, <laughs> and, and everybody immediately has a feeling. They have an emotion. They, they connect that name with a certain level of excellence and toughness. And uh, as you said, he, he's transcended the generations. There are very few people who can come into our building today who know anything about somebody who played football back in the 1960s. And uh, for Dick to occupy that place, truly an Americana, uh, is really special. And for him to be as connected as he has been to our university uh, is something that we hold very dear. What's your favorite story? about Buckus, either that you had personally or that you've had passed down to you? There are a lot of great Dick stories. You know, the first time I ever met Dick, uh, I was fortunate when I was here as an undergraduate, my college roommate was his nephew, Luke. Hmm. Uh, and Luke is now the offensive line coach, ironically enough, for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, but when we were in school, Dick would come to campus maybe once a year for a game. And I remember after that game when he visited, he came back to our little campus house that we shared with a couple guys, really a dump. And, and we sat on the floor like kids at the feet of Santa Claus. And, and he just told us story after story after story about what it was like for him, not only when he was here on our campus, but of course, as he got into the rest of his career in the National Football League with the Bears and, and life beyond that. It, it was just a for a young guy who had only heard about Dick Buckus to all of a sudden find him sitting in my living room sharing stories with just me and a really small group of people was something that uh, that I'll never forget. I never dreamed then, all these years later, that he and I would develop the friendship that, that we had and uh, were able to share a lot of other really uh, special memories together as well. To summarize things, how will he be remembered? Again, I, I think he's he can only be called one of the, the greatest Illini. I mean, he, he was just that figure for us. He was that person whose whose name and number are on the front of our stadium press box, the statue now that is in front of our Smith Football Center. Uh, he is someone who I, I think is revered in almost every sense. He, he embodied, he personified what it means to be a fighting Illini. And in all these generations later, that legacy continues to ring true. As you said, there's not a player who walks into our building who doesn't know who Dick Buckus is and, and who doesn't strive to play the game the way that Dick played it, the way that he showed us to play it. And, and so for him to have that legacy and to have done that in our place, in Memorial Stadium, in our uniform, uh, is something that we take great pride in, and, and it was really special uh, that we had a chance to, to be graced uh, by the greatness of, of Dick Buckus. Josh Whitman, Illinois Athletic Director. I always value your insights and your time. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Mike. The football team has said they encourage the Illini community to celebrate what Dick Buckus meant to them by leaving flowers by his statue just outside the Smith Center. Dick Buckus, the youngest of nine kids to Lithuanian immigrant parents. He went on to become an American sports icon. We will continue to remember him when we come back.
Well, congratulations again, Jack. You had a great season, and uh, you're representing the Butkus Award pretty good, I think, huh? Thank you, sir. It's truly an honor. I go back to when I was a rookie, you know, they treated me like crap, really. And that's the way it was anyway with everybody back in those days. And I just took the attitude, all right, I'm going to show you guys. This is who you got. You know, just because I was a number one draft choice, I didn't take the star pill, boys. You know, I'm here for business. That was from last year when Jack Campbell won Butkus's award. You look back at what he did in Champaign, pretty amazing. Almost 400 career tackles at Illinois. AFCA Player of the Year. We mentioned winning the silver football as the best player in the MVP from the Chicago Tribune. His jersey retired since the mid-1980s, and again, that award goes out to the best linebacker in the country every single year. We're bringing in Ron Gunther now, the longtime legendary Illinois athletic director and a man who was on an Illinois football squad, or two actually, with Dick Buckus. Ron, thank you so much for joining us. What is it like to play football on a team with Dick Buckus? <laughs> All I can tell you is that uh, I met Dick on my recruiting trip, and I thought to myself, you know, I should look someplace else because I was also a middle linebacker <laughs> my size when I was being recruited. And so <laughs> Coach Elliott and Bert Ingerson, Bill Taylor said, no, 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 you can play outside linebacker. But what it was like, he, if there's another football player even close to him, I don't know it. All I know is that uh, I had, as a freshman, we had to go head on head uh, because freshmen weren't eligible. And then as a teammate, as I played as a sophomore, they moved me to an outside backer. And, and you know, Dick, how can I say it? There's only one Dick Butkus. He personified what football players should be. What was it about him that makes you say he was what football players should be? <laughs> well, first thing I could tell you, I could have 100 stories, but uh, and remember, um, let's put it this way. We were in the middle of double sessions, hotter than heck, and uh, Coach Elliott got us together, and he said, I'm going to give you guys the afternoon off. A big cheer went up. We get down to the locker room. And one guy is just cussing and throwing stuff and saying, how do you expect me to get better if we don't practice? And he stormed out, and he started hitting the, 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 the tackling sled all by himself. And slowly, the rest of us kind of climbed into our gear and went out to hit some sleds, <laughs> sleds with him. But I've never seen a guy that just absolutely, absolutely wanted to play that game of football. What was he like on game day? <laughs> well, he was about as intense a guy as you could get. I mean, he, he looked forward to practices. He loved the games. And, you know, what was he like on game day? I'm sure anybody that's played with him knows that, uh, that he didn't get around him too much. It was all, all business. Uh, we went from the training table breakfast onto the bus. Couldn't get a whole lot out of him. And uh, once we hit the field, he expected everybody to go as hard as he was going. What's the best way to describe his demeanor? Um, you know, off the field, you had to get close to him. Or, or you know, he, he, had, he had a wonderful sense of humor, and he was really a good guy. He didn't let many people in, and I think a lot of that had to do because of, of, of he was such a, a, an outstanding player, but he had an awesome, awesome physique for the game. Um, from top to bottom, everybody, you know, when he walked to class, everybody was looking at him. He, he, would, he was around. So what was he, what was he like? Uh, he, he, the only one thing I can tell you about him is that he was a really, really good teammate, really, really good guy. But uh, once we crossed the line to get on the field, he was absolutely one percent football. You know, they say he was born big to the tune of 13 pounds, six ounces at birth. <laughs> did, how, how big did he feel on the football field? Well, they, they listed him at 240, maybe 250, but he, in my mind, he was 650 pounds. <laughs> and I, 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 I'd, I'd have some more teeth if, if I didn't have to go against him all spring. <laughs> but he... Uh, he he, you know, he just dominated. What can I say? I mean, there was nothing down here um, and in, in our league. I mean, quite honestly, if you look at some of the films, uh, you know, we put a clock on him. I was talking to Grabowski here a little bit ago, and I said, Jimmy, they said, they said he ran 5-1. I said, but you put, a, put another guy out there with a ball in his hand, 
he might have been four or five. I mean, in terms of speed, he he just he, he was just uh, uh, you know he, when you say physical stature, everything about him. If it was hands, his arms, he had he had uh, legs were were on a little bit more like a, a runner's legs, but I mean his upper body strength, and uh, he just you know he was just built for football. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. I'd heard that before that he was thirteen pounds. But he he was um, uh, you know just absolutely built for the game of football. Well, it certainly seems that way, and he left a legacy that isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Ron Gunther, really appreciate your time, and sorry for your loss. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it's been a bad day here for everybody. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, bye bye. In high school, Dick Buckkiss was so good, he was an all-state fullback, and he punted, and he kicked field goals, and oh yeah, he was a linebacker. A remembrance of the all-time great continues next. Back then, the, you know, that was, that was the granddaddy, you know, bowl of them all, and there wasn't the exposure there is today, and, you know, we're the big, fat Big Ten when we went out to California it was always you know we we're you know big and slow and whatever so a lot of the guys after the game uh, said you know they're gonna run around the field to show them how out of shape we were and I said yeah you guys go do it <laughs> I'm, I'm tired that was from 10 years ago when I had a chance to chat with him here in our studios meanwhile the other team he's known for the Chicago Bears released a statement saying Dick Buckus was a legend who embodied what it means to be a Chicago Bear our hearts go out to his family and friends. Back to college, the legendary voice of Illinois athletics, Lauren Tate, joined us to give his thoughts on the Illini icon. Dick Butkus was a football player. As he said, if he wasn't born to be a doctor, he wasn't born to be a lawyer, he was born to be a roughhouse football player. And I think that uh, that carried out through his life. I think everybody understood that uh, this was the most important thing in his life, uh, the Bears and the University of Illinois. Football was his life. My best memory of Dick Butkus is probably when he returned to the University of Illinois, particularly for the uh, several times he returned, and particularly for the statue, when he showed such emotion, was obviously uh, really taken by the, the moment because he kind of resisted the statue at first, and it's such a tremendous uh, statue that um, I think when he came back and broke into tears, uh, that's what I remember now, because that's the most recent thing. That's a, almost the last time I saw him. From Illinois, he went on to the Bears, as we said, was the third overall pick in 1965. Made the Pro Bowl each of his first eight seasons and was a no-doubt Hall of Fame inductee. And that's the thing. It wasn't just how strong and, and hard he hit. He forced fumbles. He got interceptions. He was an all-around marvelous player. We'll have more on the life of Dick Buckus. After all, he won the Rose Bowl in 1963, and that was just the beginning of things. We continue after this. I remember Dick Buckus for three things. Number one is the most ferocious collegiate and professional linebacker ever to play the game. He set the standard for physicality, for attitude, for all linebackers. Number two, as a former player, I remember him talking to us, uh, playing for the Illini football team, and and also as an alumni, uh, what he did and gets to know him as a person uh, and what kind of guy he was. Although he was ferocious, he was so kind-hearted and so relatable off the field. And I remember when we were at the Rose Bowl in 2008, he relayed a story to us about the 1964 Rose Bowl when his Illini took on the Washington Huskies. He said, we wanted to be physical from the jump, so we all decided to jump off sides on the very first play of the game. Well, they executed their plan, but Washington snapped the ball sooner than they thought, so they ended up jumping right when the ball was snapped, timing perfectly their launch into the offensive line. It so startled the Washington Husky offense that they fumbled the ball, Illinois recovered, and went on to win that 1964 Rose Bowl game. That's the standard, and that's the story of Dick Buckus. He'll be forever missed, an Illini legend, a Chicago Bear legend, a college football and NFL legend, but more importantly, a great person, a great friend. You will be missed. 
The head coach of the Illini football team now, Brett Bielema, released a statement saying he's saddened to learn the passing of Dick Buckus, the greatest linebacker in football history. As a head coach of his alma mater that he loved, I had the great honor to meet Dick, one of my childhood idols, last September. He was an amazing person as well as football player and a loyal Illini. Dick embodied everything that Illinois football has represented in the past and what we look to represent into the future. His deep love for Illinois football will be honored and remembered forever. One of the many people who played his position, Dana Howard, gave us this insight. I was just with him this January at the Buckets Awards, and uh, we were just hanging out um, after the ceremonies, just smoking cigars, having a drink, and man, just listening to him tell, tell those uh, those real war stories of things that he did uh, playing playing ball with the Bears and in Illinois, and just giggling and laughing, and uh, man, just enjoying sitting there. And, being in awe of the stories that he was telling us at the Buck of the War ceremony. So just being around a legend, I mean, doesn't get any better. Because what he says, you just take it for what it's worth, because he was a legend. You know, there's another great story. I mentioned the the Hollywood side of his career. In mm -hmm. the 1970s, he did a movie with Raquel Welsh, and, and she went up to the director and said, you know, everyone says he's so ferocious, I don't see it. The director said, and I quote, just don't pick up a football around him, honey. <laughs> He was an interesting character on top of being such a great football player. But I think that's what's, what's so interesting and fascinating about him because he's this ferocious player on the field. When he was away from that, you didn't get the sense. You were wondering, like, is this the guy <laughs> you talk about? But I think it just speaks to, you know, the way he was raised and just the way he felt about people. He embraced people. He loved people, wanted to be around. The football side of it was the football side, but being around and interacting with people was what he loved to do. You know, we barely had a chance to mention the philanthropy work he did. He, he, it wasn't something you just phone in. He really believed in it, especially focusing on kids doing it the right way and avoiding steroids. That was a real a real passion. Of that his. was a big push for him, and along the same time as he did that is when he started the high school Buckus Award winner, too. And that was, you know, talk about marketing. You talk about, you know, building a culture, staying away from steroids, being a tough linebacker. People got in, uh, indoctrinated to that really early, particularly if you played on the defensive side of the ball. And we mentioned throughout this show how well known he is, that it's a last name. You say it, everyone <laughs> knows who you're talking about. That's part of the thing. His legacy has grown, that high schoolers know him, college kids know him. He, he's going to be around forever. And remember, it's not like the film is great. That you're seeing, <laughs> right, right? That's true. It, it, you're hearing the stories, and, and they've done a great job of uh, really talking about that young man today. One of the greatest of all time, Dick Buckkiss lived to be 80 years old.